Hello, everyone. Welcome. I guess uh, we can get started. Um, it's only pasta, a few tips of software architecture to avoid spaghetti code. That's uh, the title of uh, our talk. Should be a pretty light talk, easy to digest, hopefully. Um, I'm uh, Lucian. I'm a staff engineer at Garmin. Um, and um, you can find the, the slides for this talk and uh, image copyrights, mostly image copyrights, uh, on this URL. So please, uh, please check it out. Uh, so let, let's get started. Let's, let's imagine a scenery and please place yourself into that scenery. Let's say that uh, you like Italian food and you're trying to find a good restaurant to eat a, a good uh, uh, pasta dish, uh, a good spaghetti dish. So you're trying to find that restaurant and this is the, the dish you're looking, looking for, spaghetti carbonara. Uh, and as soon as this delicious dish comes to you, you're somehow more an analytic type and you start thinking about spaghetti code. And you're trying to make uh, analogies between those, those two things. So the, that's the setting that I, I want you to, to imagine for, for this whole talk. We're going to switch between the two worlds quite often do, during this small talk. So, the first thing that I want to, to focus on is uh, what I call overview. Let me start with uh, a story that happened something like, I don't know, 10 years ago before I, I joined Garmin. I was working uh, on a smaller company on a text-to-speech uh, project that we were trying to, to sell some services based on this, this technology. It doesn't really matter what. And uh, we had a new person joining the team, a co-CEO, and that person wanted to interview all the projects and try to find out what, what would be the main thing that those projects uh, will do and what would be the, the business value for those projects. And I, I got a meeting with this new co-CEO. And uh, one of the early questions that I've got is, uh, please describe, describe to me what, what the system does. Um, and uh, I was not quite prepared for that, I don't know why, but uh, anyway, I, I briefly told him in something like uh, two paragraphs uh, what, uh, what our project was all about. And after that, the co-CEO paused and uh, gave me a look and said something like, is that it? Is that everything that you're doing? Can't this be done by Microsoft or some any other company? Um, and that, that got me thinking. The discussion went on and whatever, it, it doesn't matter. But for a week or so, I was kind of upset because um, I thought it didn't quite go well. It shouldn't uh, say those, those things to the new co-CEO. But after some time, I realized that actually I did the right thing. That was my first good sign of being an architect. I was able to take a complex problem, take a complex project and explain it to somebody who had no idea about what that thing is in, uh, in two paragraphs or two phrases. Uh, and that person felt like they completely knew what the system was about. And that's, uh, that's what I call this overview, to have the bigger picture and to make sure that you can explain that to, to different audiences, to, to different people, in order to, to get them on board with what you're doing. Of course, they do not know all the details. And of course, they, uh, they miss some of the uh, less important parts, but they do get the bigger picture and it's, easy, it's easier for them to, to relate to that. And that, that brings me to this uh, dichotomy, which uh, actually can, uh, goes long, long way back to Aristotle, between essential and accidental. Whenever we, we are looking at uh, the overview, we are trying to formulate some essential that somehow fills up pretty much the problem space and leave up all the accidental details. Uh, of course, we had a lot of problems on our, our project. Of course, we had a lot of struggles. Of course, we were trying to fix things and solve that. But that, that doesn't matter. That's, that's kind of inherent for, for all the projects, right? So we are focusing on the essential and drop the accidental to do that. 
And if we are doing this, then the whole problem that you're trying to explain, the whole project, it's easier to understand. Uh, it's easier to explain to people. It's easier to reason about, right? So then as a, as a takeaway, it's easier to be, uh, bring people on board. And we all know the software uh, is essential complexity. So having the overview, having this ability to, um, to separate essential from accidental is a way for you to tame complexity. It's not the only way, but it's, it's one important way to tame complexity. This is essential for software architecture, as I, as I just said, right? So in order to properly do software architecture, you have to be able to do that to some extent. But this is not only applicable to software architecture, it's essential uh, to writing good code as well. If you're able to, to provide good overviews for your problems, even if there are small problems, then probably you're going to write good abstractions. Let me give you a simple example. The, I have two problem descriptions. The one is a sorting algorithm. Uh, we can all understand what that is. The second one is an algorithm that then consists of a blend of non-parameterizable sort algorithms and heuristics hand-tuned for performance that can sort sequences of integers and can be useful in other contexts. It turns out the second paragraph describes exactly what the sorting algorithm I was thinking of, but it's, it's more accurate. It captures a lot of details, but it's far harder to reason about. If you say something like sorting algorithm, it's much easier to get the people on board. So next time you, you have spaghetti code, try to think of how can you wrap it up and present it as delicious pasta. Don't think about the individual spaghettis that form your dish. Think about the overall picture. And the overall picture is you may have a delicious pasta. Actually, uh, I haven't heard about a single tech company that claims their code is clean, their code is perfect. Everybody complains like, we have so much complexity here, we have so many problems, and somehow the grass is greener on the other side. It's just because we have different perspectives, right? So when you look at the code, think of it like that. It's only pasta. It's your job to ensure that it's also a delicious pasta, and we should try to make a better world for us to enjoy our delicious pasta. So that's my first thing. Let, let me go into the second part, or the second tip for software architecture, which is coherence. Let's, let's try to, um, to imagine that you're going to that restaurant, you're still finding that restaurant. You enter your first restaurant. The first picture that you see is this. Something is not right. This is not typical for an Italian restaurant. You can draw some conclusions based on, on this picture. Probably the pasta you will get here is not quite the pasta that, that you're after, right? So instead of getting this dish, it's highly likely that you get something different like this. This is still pasta, but it's not the pasta that you wanted. It may be a delicious pasta, but again, it's not the pasta that, uh, that, that you want from, it, uh, from your restaurant. So this can be achieved by having a high cohesion. And this is a so overloaded term, but to be honest, I don't know what, what better term to use here. If we have high cohesion, there are less things to keep in our mind, right? It's uh, similar to the previous point in which we said, we keep the essential and we drop the accidental. If things look uh, the same, then we can drop some accidental parts of it and we focus on the essential. Let's look at this particular um, diagram of a code. That, that may look like, like your code and probably everybody can identify with, with this uh, drawing as uh, being uh, some part of the, their code. And I believe that, um, everybody considers this as to be purely random. Actually, it's not. 
if we try to separate out, you have three things put on top of each other. And each thing is relatively simple. You can see the drawing pattern that I use to create all of these things, right? It, it's kind of a simple pattern. Um, once you look at it, you can probably describe it. Uh, and yet, when you put them together, it's not at e as easy to, um, to, to see what's, what's in there. And let me just put them together. Now, as you've seen the parts, let me put together the same three parts. You get this picture. Some of you may, may know how to decipher this picture, but I bet that most of you uh, will not be able to decipher this thing, right? It, they, most of you will not be able to untangle this into those three different pieces. So in order to say that this is a delicious pasta, you must make sure that you have some kind of coherence on your dish. You must ensure that you have the right things in it. Which brings me to, to my third point, which is about balance. And that's, that's very important in, in software architecture, not only. So um, let's say this time that somehow you're into this uh, pasta business and somehow either you acquire an Italian restaurant or whatever, you're in charge of serving to the stakeholders, management engineers, your delicious pasta. Right? How do you do that? How do you serve this delicious pasta, avoiding the big ball of mud? So um, if, uh, if you look at this pasta, it probably contains some ingredients, pasta, bacon, parmesan, cream, salt, and pepper. It's important for, for you, whenever you put those things in, to put the right amount of those things. You should probably not put too much pasta and too little bacon uh, or salt and pepper or whatever, right? You have to put the right amount. You have to put the right balance. Uh, you should not just put only pasta and you should not just put only bacon in there. And that, that brings me to, to this quote that I love from Aristotle. Virtue is the golden mean between two vices. The one is excess and the other one uh, of deficiency. Uh, and Aristotle bases his entire ethics on this principle of golden mean. In order to be virtuous, uh, you have to have this mean between two, two extremes. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why Kevlin cannot talk more about philosophy and software engineering, but at least you have a glimpse here uh, of how Aristotle's think um, ethics should be. And uh, that's probably why uh, one of the reasons why I like software engineering, it has so much to do with, uh, with these types of ethics. So let's see how, how you can apply this in your project. Um, the time spent in program analysis, you have two extremes. You don't do any analysis at all, just try to uh, code as soon as possible, or you get into that analysis paralysis in which you keep analyzing and analyzing and analyzing, and you never finish analyzing because you never know the, the whole picture. And the golden mean is somewhere in between. You have to do some analysis, not too little, not too much. You have to find the right spot. Another one is uh, time spent in refactoring. You may have no refactoring at all, or you may blindly do refactoring over and over and over until uh, you just do refactoring without uh, doing any, uh, any real features for your application. Time spent with performance optimization. You, you don't care about performance, you just put code there that functionally works and that's it. Or you chase irrelevant performance issues like you, you're so obsessed of uh, optimizing everything when that everything doesn't, doesn't matter, right? There's always a balance here. And in general with software, there's always a balance between cost, time to market, safety, reliability, functionality, performance, and many others. There's always this balance. You cannot properly have the cheapest project ever and the more uh, the, the one with most functionality or reliability. You can't get the, the system to market uh, very, very fast and have excellent performance. Th those are just examples, right? So uh, this even applies to to this talk, you can't just focus on one of these three things. I've just mentioned three tips here, but 
there, there are multiple others. Uh, without considering the whole thing, you can't just focus on overview and forget about coherency or vice versa. You can't just try to balance everything, but you don't know what to balance. So um, I want to leave you with, with this thought. Um, next time you think about pasta, or next time you think about software, think about these three things, overview, coherency, and balance. Thank you very much.